The time has come, ladies and gentlemen. I am so excited. I have been waiting all week and a little before then and a couple of months before then and about a year or so before then. It's time to put fish in my saltwater aquarium. So yeah, I kind of forgot to tell everybody that I've been setting a saltwater tank up the last couple of months. It's been cycling. I've also got a few other tanks that I've been just enjoying behind the scenes. Now things are coming together. I'm starting to get passionate again and I'm ready to bring videos back to you guys. And in this video, we're not really going to talk about how to's and whatnot with salt water and how this tank came to be. That'll be for a different video. Right now, I just want to show you guys some fish. So I'm going to the local fish store in Warsaw, Virginia. Just got off work and I'm going to go to Gordon's Pet Store to pick up a certain fish and it's gonna be the first one going into this tank I've got to be careful because I've got to introduce these fish in the correct order So these flame gouramis, I was looking at them and I kind of almost regret not getting them. I can always get them at a different time, but I definitely wanted to grab one or two for another aquarium that hasn't been revealed to YouTube yet. So this maroon clownfish, I have a thing for maroons. I had one in the past, I absolutely loved it. And long story short, I might come back and get this one day. All right, I'm home and I am excited to put this fish in the tank. Got the fish and some food for the fish. I've got one of my bait buckets. So I'll show you something with that. Salt residue on the tank of the glass, so forgive me, but let's start acclimating this fish into its new home. What I highly recommend you guys doing is turn the lights off at your aquarium. I'm doing this for video purposes. So we've got the Niger Trigger here. Absolutely love these fish. I had one of these a long time ago. I loved it. I'm hoping this one gains my interest like that one did, maybe more. So the first thing we're gonna do is temperature acclimate saltwater fish. There's different ways of acclimating saltwater fish, but this is the way I do it. This fish is kind of feisty. Um, it kind of grunted at me when I went to uh, net it out at the local fish store, or at least I thought it grunted. It could have been a sound from the bag of the net or something, but triggers do grunt. So fish is looking good. In the home aquarium, what you want to do is turn the lights off to make the transition as easy as possible. Moonlights aren't as bad, but for video purposes, I'm going to leave the light on for you guys. All right, it's been about 15, 20 minutes since the Niger Trigger's been floating in the bag in the aquarium. Once again, we're getting the temperature acclimated slowly. That's a key thing with the aquariums is stability. Parameters can vary. Different parameters can work for different fish keepers, but the key is stability. It's now time to move on to the next phase of acclimation. That's getting the water chemistry to match. So. This is where it gets a little different with salt water than it does with fresh water. It's not complicated, it's just a couple more steps. There's more water chemistry to salt water than there is with fresh water, so to speak. So there's more things that the fish has to become accustomed to, and we want to make it as least stressful as possible. So in salt water, a slow acclimation is usually best. All right, so trigger's been in here for a while. Gonna go ahead and turn the air pump off. <clears throat> Remove the drip line. And you can get these things from Walmart. Um, this may not be good for you for acclimation. If you had fish in a bag for a long period of time, like overnight or so on and so forth, you, you don't wanna do drip acclimation <clears throat> for a lot of freshwater fish. And the reason for that is because the ammonia levels build up inside the bag and then 
in lower pH levels since the oxygen is getting consumed. There's less oxygen and more CO2. CO2 lowers the pH in the water. Since there's less oxygen levels and the pH is down, um, ammonia gets binded up and turns into a non-toxic form. But once pH goes back up, that ammonia quickly converts into a toxic form of ammonia, quickly killing any fish inside the bag. But once again, this Nitro Trigger has been in this bag water for like 20 minutes from the pet store home and about another 20 minutes acclimating so it's time to get them home now this fish was skittish at the local fish store I, I do expect to take some time to have this fish to come out I hope it doesn't bite me with those little teeth oh he's he's using his little fins to okay wow he's strong I don't want to hurt him all right, you got all kinds of things laying around in the fish room you never use, right? So let's see if the little itty bitty net will make him feel secure like it's a cave. Let's see. Don't jump. What I say? He swam right in it. Oh, whew, thank you. And I'm gonna let him swim out of the net if he. Don't bite the net. Let, stop biting the net. There he goes. Oh yeah. You see, once they know they have hiding spots, they're gonna be more likely to come out. And I might not see him for a couple hours or a couple days. <laughs> I'll keep you posted. So in real life time, the fish went into the aquarium, darted to the rocks, didn't come out. Got home from work the next day, I introduced food into the system and the fish immediately came out and started eating. Eating very vigorously showing good signs this fish is strong it's going to do good in my aquarium i believe it's eating it's got an appetite and that's key so once i know this fish settles in completely it's probably going to be one of the main features in my aquarium with probably one of the most personalities in that tank but in the meantime i'm looking at a six foot long tank and i've got a fish in there i really don't even see it unless i feed it or it comes out every now and then and then goes back into the caves so I've been cycling this tank for months. I've been feeding it like there's fish in there, so there's been a bite, there's been waste that's been breaking down, introducing a bio load, so to speak, so allowing the nitrogen cycle to take place. What I'm getting at is that I wanted to add another fish because I got tired of looking at a bear tank, so I did that. Here I am in my other truck, and guess what I've got? In between these thunder thighs of justice, there's another saltwater fish. Boom! I do want to take this time and just tackle a concern that a lot of you guys are probably going to be having. And that's, how am I going to be balancing freshwater and saltwater? Well, I did it before and I'm going to do it again. I've decided that I'm going to get back to the basics of what made Wayne's Fish World fun and enjoying. And... I've been stopped making videos a while, but I feel the passion coming back and I'm ready to share that with you guys. And basically we're gonna be doing this like an aquarium diary uh and not i'm not hinting or stealing the name of uh there's a youtuber called my aquarium diary not a stab at that person at all or copying them but that's what it's gonna be it's gonna be whatever events is gonna be going on in my aquarium life we're just gonna be documented so if i've got stuff going on with salt water or new inhabitants in fresh water or plant water or something we're gonna be jumping back and forth because there's two sides of a coin when it comes to fish keeping well actually more than that but i do want to just touch on one thing right now and uh, I don't really like spreading negativity I'm all about building the community you guys know that I want to see the spread of knowledge that way we can better ourselves and we are more likely to successfully keep the fish that are we caring for because if we can't properly do that we don't need to house them either be the simplest goldfish tetra or feeder fish you know all the way up to the Moorish idols and the discus and the SPS corals wherever in that spectrum if you can't properly house for it you don't need to have it and that goes for everything from ponds to monster fish keeping to brackish to freshwater to planted aquariums to even the reef tanks so i'm going to take a stab and i'm not going to call anybody out but i'm going to stab at a few people in the community or not a people but just type of channels everyone's different in this community and that's that's okay it's it's perfect to be different that's what makes us all individuals but there's too many celebrity channels in this aquarium hobby. I want to get back to 
basically enjoying the experience of keeping fish and spreading that with others. So that's what I'm going to be focused on, guys. I'm going to be focused on spreading my journey and my love of fish keeping with you guys. It's not about the fame. It's not about making a name or showing off on YouTube. It's about keeping fish. So guys, Wayne's Fish World, I will see you next time with a brand new video. I'm excited to be, I just, I feel it. I got the passion back and it's time to spread that with you guys once more. It took a while, but better late than never. Guys, if you want to see new content coming each week, hit that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, hit the bell button because YouTube makes changes and it's weird and I don't agree with it. You think if you were subscribed to somebody, you would see their videos, but no, you got to hit the bell button to actually get notified when they make videos to people you're already subscribed to. Other than that, guys, I've been Wayne with Wayne's Fish World. I'll see you guys next time. Later.